first, uh, I would like to say thanks to all the members of the TED My Life to invite me to this really wonderful meeting. The, the atmosphere is fantastic. Honestly, I, I don't like a lot the academic talk, but I'm very excited to be here this morning. And I'm honored to discuss with you with this very expert meeting about the upper identical transplant in uh, thalassemia. Just a few introduction. The thalassemia is the mass spread mortal genetic disease in the world. It's concentrated in the where the area is endemic for malaria. And in some areas of the world, include Italy, they abolished the, the problem of the thalassemia with the therapeutic abortion. I'm, I'm not agree at all. We have to consider that thalassemia disease is a progressive clinical disease. As you can see, the clinical manifestation of the thalassemia patient is really heterogenic. You can find many clinical diseases that you can find in a general medicine. You have to consider cardiopathy, um, arthropathy, neuroendocrinological dysfunction, cirrhosis, liver disease. And the first conclusion is that thalassemia measure can be prevent, can be treat, and can be cure. Hematopoietic cell stem, stem cell transplantation remain the only curative option for patients with thalassemia. No question about that. And this is really the problem. At the time of the transplant, the thalassemic patients are identified in three class, class one, class two, and class three, on the basis of some risk factor, chelation, hepatomegaly, and fibrosis. For the patient in class one and the patient in class two, we adopted a protocol that we call protocol six, busulfan 14, cyclophosphamide 200. Using this protocol in a group of class one patients, the thalassemia-free survival, I mean the patients that are cured, that are free of thalassemia, is 87%. Using the same protocol in a class two patient, the thalassemia-free survival is 85%, but this approach is not working well for the patient in class three, for the high grade, high risk. For this kind of patient, we adopted a new protocol from April 97 that we call protocol 26. We start 45 days before the transplant using hydrosurea and azathioprine, followed by fludarabine. And here there is a difference. We have to consider young patient and adult patient. The buff group receive the same dose of busulfan, 14. But for the young problem, for the young patient, the problem is the return of thalassemia, the rejection. The total dose of cyclophosphamide is 160. From the adult, the problem is the toxicity. The total dose of cyclophosphamide was reduced to 19. Using this protocol, in 33 class three thalassemic patients, the thalassemia free survival is again 85%. So, now, me and my teacher, Professor Guido Lucarelli, is the pioneer of the bone marrow transplant in thalassemia. At this point, we move from Pesaro to Rome. And the Rome experience is uh, characterized by two peculiarities. That the patients were ethically very heterogeneous, and there is high risk of rejection. In Rome, we accept pressure from Kuwait, from Iraq, from Kurdistan, from Lebanon, from Egypt, from Maldives, from Fiji, from the United States. And using the same protocol in 80 class three patients, we obtain the same results. Thalassemia free survival is 82%. So the Rome experience confirmed that the results obtained in Pesaro, and most importantly, show that the reproduction of the Pesaro experience in other centers. And this is the, our point. Because without, we have to consider that without the bone marrow transplant, the thalassemic patient can survive using iron chelation therapy, a blood transfusion regularly. I mean 
blood transfusion every three weeks. Right. But try to ask to a father of the little child thalassemic that is living in Afghanistan. And you say, don't be worried, don't be worried. Your child can survive. He needs iron chelation therapy, blood transfusion. He looked to you and say, excuse me, doctor, but where do you think that can I find blood and iron chelation therapy in Kabul? And you don't know exactly what is the answer. And also, the other big problem is that the, the actually identical sibling, the donor identical, is available for 30 to 40% in multiracial thalassemic patients. But it is estimated in a chest that 300,000 children are born each year with severe inherited disorder. So the first point, now please, I need all your artistic mind. We need to amplify the pool of the donor. And we have to go inside the problem of the transplant from not HLA identical donor, apple identical transplant in thalassemia. And we have to answer two three questions. Why, how, the message. Why we have to answer two different questions? Because there is no general scientific agreement regarding this kind of bone marrow transplant, but we strongly believe in that. Why? First question. Yes, as we talked before, the use of regular blood transfusion and iron chelation therapy has improved the survival of the thalassemic patient, but it's impossible the reproduction of this mother in low income areas. And it's absolutely true that without blood transfusion and iron, and iron chelation therapy, the thalassemic patient rarely survive five years old. So we have to find a way to transplant the child without an actual identical donor. M many, many questions regarding the optimal graft composition. Now, I, I don't want to go inside the detail, but how we can bypass the wall of the HLA disparity, what the role of natural killer cell in terms of the engraftment, many, many questions. But sometimes, if you stop, you can find the solution. And, and the solution sometimes is very simple. I tried to talk with uh, my professor, and he said to me, Pietro, bone marrow transplant has no brain. Bone marrow transplant does not care if you are curing about leukemia, meloma, or lymphoma. Bone marrow transplant has no brain. It's a simple word, but it's a true. So, who is the best apple identical donor? In my opinion, nobody knows. Maybe nobody knows who is this woman, or if is she a woman? But we stop and we see. We have to find a solution, and the, the miracles of the nature are in everywhere. We have just to stop and thinking. If I'm asking to you, Luca, regarding the biology of the pregnancy, try to explain to me the fetus inherits a different set of polymorphic gene from each parent. 50% father, 50% from mother. Right? This is true. Why did your mother not reject you? Because the mother, during the pregnancy time, has something inside that is totally different is 50% for other people. Why? It is, it's not my question. More than 5,000 years ago, Leonardo da Vinci asked to himself the same question. It's not my question because if it was my question, I'm a genius and I'm not. But the question of why the semiallogenic fetus is not rejected by the mother remains unresolved. Because the immunological system of the mother recognizes that there is something inside that is totally different. But the first voice of the nature is one voice that we usually forget. 
the first voice is no war. I like to say again, no war. And this is the first rule of the nature. Nobody will land in nothing. This is the conclusion of Leonardo da Vinci. Sure, now, if I want, if now I try to do the scientist and I say that, sure, I know that there is the fast ligand, the early pregnancy factor, the HLAG, that protecting the fetus from the lytic activity of the maternal and uterine natural killer cell. And studies on pregnant women show that fetal cells appear in maternal circulation at the early stage of the gestation, and that genetic microchimeries persist for many years after birth. If we translate in bone marrow transplant, we can conclude that transplantation from identical donor to a recipient mismatch for maternal antigen is associated with less graft versus host disease. On the same line of the protocol 26, we describe another protocol that we call protocol 30. We start two months before with hydrosurea and azathioprine. We use fludarabine, busulfan, cyclophosphamide, thiotepa very strong myelotoxicity regimen. And using this protocol, in 31 identical, very young thalassemic patients, the thalassemia-free survival is 70%. Yes, okay. Now, we are very delighted. We are very gratified. We publish in every kind in the world. But there is one problem that is unresolved. The minority of the thalassemic patients are able to come in Europe to receive bone marrow transplant because they have to spend a lot of money and we have to think that the fruit of faith is love and the fruit is love is service. So there is here one of my friends, uh, the name is Eugenio, that uh, some years ago during a uh, tennis match we tried to discuss some, something about that and he he wrote one email to Muhammad Yunus, and I never able to write one email like Eugenio. And Muhammad Yunus say, oh, "Okay, guy, uh, I'm waiting for you at four o'clock in the 10th of August in Dhaka." We were four o'clock, 10 August in Dhaka. We start to to understand something. We are going around the world in India in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, in Lebanon, in Nigeria, in Africa, and try to image this scenario. You go inside one hospital room, and there is a little child in front of you, and with the wonderful black eyes that uh, is watching you. And you stay like that with your stupid jacket, with stupid iPad, and you don't know what you have to do, what you have to say. And, but the answer is from him, because he say, please, I don't want picture. I don't want photo. I don't want to show my suffer in the world. But I know that I'm going to die because I can't receive the right therapy. But if you look on the back of me, there are thousands of children that is like me. And they don't have to lose the hope that they can be cured. So, man, you have to keep my eyes inside of you. And please, move. Start to do something. Not for me, but my eyes is with you. So, cure thalassemia. I don't know what I have to say more. We try to do this kind of model, a social business model, adopted in a thalassemic disease. And we start. We are going to start the first bone marrow transplant using the identical mother in India. But what is the, I don't know, the, the lights, the first lights? 
we was in India, and we had the, the honor, the occasion, to speak in front of 700 of women, mother, with uh, his child that was affected by thalassemia. At this point, you try to anticipate that there is a hope. Nobody can stop 700 of the women that understand that his child is able to be cured. It's like that, a little light in a dark room. What we hope is there is this little child that say, hi, I'm fine. And now I'm going to play soccer. Thank you for everybody.